how long have you been doing mortgages? Like over 25 years. Long okay, time. perfect. Beautiful. Okay. So you were doing research on YouTube and it led to a question you sent me directly about one of my videos, but whatever questions you have hit me. The thing is like, okay, so yeah, you're saying establish this referral network. Okay. That sounds really good. And that's all, that's great. Like I have not really gone after realtors that much because it's not a, it's not a, my kind of thing to do. Meaning like I haven't had much success with it and I'm not a networking kind of person. Like, Hey, I want to schmooze you and be your friend and take you to coffee. And you know, like that's not me. Like yeah. if you want to work with me, great. And not, and just it's business. Right. I mean, so, it, so th that's never been comfortable for me. So what I didn't understand given my question, I didn't understand when you said like, you get all these different groups, you know, you say your wife has like 160 people and I'm like, Okay, yeah, but there's no way, there's no way that I could refer back to these businesses, to a contractor. I mean, like, maybe once in 10 years, you know? How do you establish these referral networks with other people? With his real estate agents, it's it's a very unique industry to find ones that are humble, show up on time, maybe don't have some of the elitist stuff going on, even though people are getting humbled right now in this market. It's a unique industry to work in. Okay, so let's go off that premise. Number one, I've you know I've worked with thousands of real estate agents and thousands of mortgage lenders. Okay, so I'm gonna have to break down what you said into about four parts. There's no, I don't have a magic bullet, but I can answer each part. In August of 2023, it'll be 20 years I've been teaching this. So I've had over six, way over 6,000 one-on-one coffee meetings, Mark. Can it come off as fake if the premise of the coffee meeting is, so I 100% agree with you, most are fake. When the guy, hey, let's have coffee. When you know 20 minutes in, <clears throat> the guy's going to try to sell to you directly or get business from you. So I've created a system called the Coffee Meeting Millionaire. How I've literally made millions and millions of dollars personally sitting in Starbucks. I can't give you the whole system. I'll be here all day. Yeah, no, I understand. But, but basically... When I'm meeting with other referral partners, so if I'm a mortgage lender and I'm meeting with financial planners, CPAs, real estate agents, bankers, I'm trying to figure out how to help them get more business. Now, Mark, I'm going to take a samurai sword. I'm going to cut you in half. Okay, so there's there's this, there's going to be a V now. This is Mark's head right here, and there's going to be a V. This side is the concern that you're having that most people I talk to have. Rick, I want to get in with all these referral partners, but I only have three clients. I, I don't have anything to offer these people. What can I offer them to get in? So you're thinking about leads and referrals to referral partners, back and forth. And what I'm saying is, Mark, that's one side when you have a client. Let's just use the example Mark, because I, I can tell you personally that that and I've worked with my wife helps people invest in land, by the way. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Done about close to 900 transactions. Hundreds have come from mortgage lenders. Hundreds. I have one lady. I've done 80 yeah, real estate transactions with one lady. lady. Yeah. So I've made millions of dollars just for mortgage lenders. So I've spent a lot of time with people like you, right? So you so I'm gonna use me personally. When my grandmother died, my dad sold the house, I inherited money. If I was to come to you and say, hey, Mark, I just inherited 150 grand. I want to talk to you about buying an investment property. That gives you, Mark, an opportunity, potentially. You can ask. You could ask me, hey, Rick, I'm really sorry for your loss. Congratulations on the, on the inheritance, though. Do you need a financial planner? Do you need a CPA? Um, do you need an estate plan? Uh, do you need a real estate agent? So that when death and marriage stirs up a lot of business. So so somebody passes away, I inherit money, and then you now have this awesome opportunity to introduce me to an estate planning attorney, a financial planner, CPA, whatever I need to make my life better, right? So that's the that's the opportunity where we're, we, we've got a potential client to a referral partner. And I'm gonna hold this up real quick just to give you, just to give you a brief on another concern. So now we're gonna go, we're still staying on this side, clients to power partners and back and forth. But I want to talk to you briefly about something called the power of three. This will keep you from worrying about introducing, and you didn't say it, but I will, a head that makes you look bad. Because like if you refer, if you refer a financial planner, okay, so let's just use me. I inherit money and you say, you know, I don't know if you're going to put all that money into a house, but do you need a financial planner? You know, I was thinking about maybe putting $50,000 with a financial planner, but I don't have one. Now, Mark, that's a golden opportunity. But what I don't want you to do, Mark, is I don't want you to expose yourself to giving a bad referral where that person now is pissed off at you, you sent the, you sent the gunky. So there's something that I learned from attorneys called the power of three. So I'm going to show you three business cards 
and then I'm going to go over what the power of three is. Okay. Attorneys cannot give one name because if I give, if, if Mark, if you give somebody a financial planner and that guy loses that person money, Mark, as an attorney, you could get in huge trouble um, for giving bad advice, right? But Mark, if you give three, then you've eliminated exposure with the proper wording. So we're still on this side, Mark. I haven't even talked to you about the other side that you didn't even mention, which is the side that I'm the expert at even more than this. Mark, uh, you're, a, you're a mortgage lender. I'm My grandmother just died and heard 160 grand. I, I, got, I, I find you however I find you. And you say, sorry for your loss. You know, do you need a estate planning attorney? You, you know, you came into some money, you know, financial planning, you need a CPA. I don't need a tax employee. I don't know how you got the money at trust or, you know, how it worked. You know, Mark, I'm thinking about a financial planner. Well, Mark, if you have had, I've had over 6,500 coffee meetings. So let's say you've had 25 meetings with financial planners and these are the three you liked. You had to have 25 copies to find three you liked. Now, this is this side of it. We haven't gotten there yet. I just want to say you have business cards with three financial planners. So when you're sitting with me and I'm at your desk and you open up your drawer and go, if you need a financial planner, I've met with these, these three guys personally. They're not my financial planner. I can't have three financial planners, but these are people I've had coffee with. I've met with personally. They seem like great people, but I don't want to guide you on who to pick. Now, Mark, that's releasing your exposure, but I, I'm going to give you these three cards. And if you'd like, I can open up an email and do an email introduction to each one of these people individually if you'd like or here are their cards and do me a favor please mention i introduce them because i'll take extra special care of you if they don't you're going to find out about it that's a side note so <clears throat> mark you've relieved all pressures you've had all these coffee meetings so you could have a pool of financial planners now when you give me three financial planners let's go to what b and i and a lot of groups say that's happened to be my wife's card but let a lot of groups say give one card so if you give one, Mark, and this person shows up late, doesn't respond, or or just there's a vibe I'm getting I don't like. Mark, the chance of me calling you back to let you know I need another one. Yeah. Now, this increases Mark's odds of getting a call back because one, one didn't respond, these two responded, and I met with these two. And man, there was something I'm not going to pick myself. You pick this person. But I want to talk to you about what Mark gets out of this. So Mark, what you get out of it is you have built karma through the law of reciprocity for the two people she didn't pick. Now, even the one that didn't respond, you've built karma with this person because this person here didn't respond, but you still tried. So the, the law of reciprocity, you get rewarded for effort. This person went on the meeting, didn't get the business, but he's still very, very appreciative of the opportunity. Sure. This person got the business. Boy, oh boy, this financial planner, now the next time one of their clients needs a mortgage, what face is going to pop up? Oh, let me point this way. That guy. So you've built reciprocity now with having one client sitting at your desk, me, you have built reciprocity with three financial planners. I call it the power of three. But what you've also done, Mark, uh, the proper scripting is... Do, do, would you happen to need a financial planner? Do you need a good real estate agent? What do, you, what do you need to help you financial planner? Here's three. Now, I personally have not done business with any of these three people, but I highly recommend you reach out or I can give you a personal email introduction, which honestly is better, but not everybody wants that. Which would you prefer? I would prefer to take the cards and contact them. Good. When you do, please make sure that you use my name. I want I want to know if somebody stands you up or doesn't respond. I want to know because these are my these are my guys and I want to know if they're not performing for my clients. Yeah. Setting expectations. What you've also say is anything you need. I know a lot of people. You need a CPA, uh, you're a business owner, you need a payroll company, if you need a life insurance agent, you need a real estate agent, you need a financial planner. When you move in, if you need a carpet cleaner, a roofer, a handyman, a pool cleaner, anything you need, call this guy Mark, and I will do the exact same thing. So Mark, what you've done to set yourself apart is you referred three. So now three financial planners you built reciprocity with. You told the client, anything you need, I will do this for you. And then you don't have to go look around. I'll provide it. That client, me, now I'm sitting with a friend of mine. Man, oh man, what an experience. I just, I met with my mortgage lender and he helped me get a financial planner. The guy's freaking amazing. Really? My, my financial planner only calls me when rates are low so he can try to get a refi out of me. Maybe I should talk to your guy. Here's his information. So you built reciprocity with the three financial planners and then you became the guy who isn't only calling his clients when you think he should refi so you can make a couple bucks. By becoming this guy, that's what sets you apart because Mark, having worked with literally 
hundreds of mortgage lenders, you're all going to get me the same rate. I'm buying because of the experience I have with Mark or because somebody told me to call you. My next door neighbor, my mom, my realtor, my financial said, call Mark. That's the only way I'm going to find you, Mark. Yeah. It's not rate. It's what makes you different. What makes you different is when a financial planner sitting with his client and says, and says, uh, you, you know, I see this bonus check. What, what do you want to do? Well, I'm thinking about buying a home. Here, call Mark. He's the best mortgage lender in town. Well, you earned that, Mark. That leads me to this side where everybody's concerned. Well, if I join a networking group, I don't, I'm new, to, new in town. I don't have a lot of clients. I don't have any people to refer. Let me tell you what's more important than that whole conversation we just had, okay, is this. Now, remember, I cut you in half with a samurai sword. And this side is everybody worrying about, do I have any people I could send to a real estate agent? If I meet a financial planner, do I have any clients? Mark, I don't care if you have any clients. I could make you the best known mortgage lender in your in Walnut Creek with you having no clients. I want you to imagine. In fact, I'll give you the script to help you hear how coffee meetings that when I, and I don't know where you got the number, but you nailed it. You want to have about 160 referral partners. Having said that, you're going to get most of your business from five to 10 industries. The reason you should have all those other ones is so you can provide extra care to your client. They might need a painter. They might need a handyman. They might need a pool cleaner. You're never going to get business from those people, Mark, but we're trying to please the client so he tells his friends and family members about you. That's the goal. What I say, Mark, is, and you got to have three of each. So you want to make that long list because the other thing we're talking about, we're talking about Mark, the mortgage lender. So that's Mark, the mortgage lender, looking for referral partners. When you work on the list, most whoever's real estate or mortgage, whoever's doing it thinks who can send me business, who can send me business, who can send me business, who can send, and then they come up with this short list. But then we got to look at who can I send business to? Who can I send business to? And then it'll add more. And then who can I refer to my client when a change in life happens that will do nothing for me financially, but will build reciprocity with the client? And that would be things like, Mark, you're, you're never going to get a, a referral fee from an estate planning attorney because they can't take them and they can't pay them. But if you refer to a good estate planning attorney to one of your clients and then the like I have a, a friend who his mom died and he he's an insurance agent. He talked to all his brothers and sisters into getting half a million dollar life insurance on their parents. Well, his mom died. So that was a $2 million payout to his four brothers and sisters. If you provided an estate planning attorney to my friend Steve, he might tell his brothers and sisters, and you just got that estate planning attorney for clients. Mark, you're not going to make a dime from that. But but I just got that goosebumps on my arms just thinking about how their family died. Now they're coming with a crap ton of money. They, they probably need an estate plan. You provided it. Mark got four clients, which means Mark's going to make about 12 to 15 grand. Uh, I mean, I mean the, the estate planning attorney is going to make 12 to 15 grand, you're not going to make a dime. But how does that make you feel to help a human being that you had a freaking coffee meeting with make 12 to 15 grand and you help the family where their mom just died? I mean, that is like, if that doesn't make you feel good, then you need to get a new career, uh, honestly. Because I have goosebumps under my shirt just thinking about it. But what that does for your confidence, Mark, and what that does for your karma. So you know now the next coffee meeting you have, that could happen to you. But I'll give you real quick. So the thought is this, Mark. I'm going to give you the big picture real quick. This side is introducing, uh, I got a guy who wants to buy a home. I'll introduce him to a real estate agent. That doesn't have a lot of power. And how does Mark really get in with these realtors, these financial planners, so they really think of Mark? So forget about clients. I don't care if you'd ever had another client. I do. I want you to be rich. But what I want you to do to get in with them is forget this side. Now we're only going to talk about this side. No trick questions here. Okay, so I, I'm not trying to sound, they're really basic questions and I know the answer is going to be yes, but I'm going to ask you anyway, okay? In your entire life, I know the answer is yes. In the entire life, have you ever met a real estate agent? Yes. Have you ever met a banker? Yeah. Met a financial planner? Yes. CPA? Yes. Bookkeeper? Yes. Business coach? Yeah. Life coach? No, no life coach. <laughs> okay, you will when you get out there more. Chiropractor? <laughs> yes. Hairstylist. Yeah. Nail salon. Yeah. Fitness trainer. Yeah. So Mark, what you could do is, have you ever sat with somebody in a meeting just like this and they're kind of, oh, I need some ass, my, my back's killing me. Have you ever thought that or seen that in your life? The answer is yes. If you introduce them to a chiropractor, you're doing good for the world. 
And the law of reciprocity and the law of mutual exchange and a lot, the, a lot of laws that are out there are Mark needs to build the karma in the world. If the whole world revolves around Mark is only going to take an action when Mark gets paid, then Mark is going to be very lonely sitting in that office. It's just the way it is. We need to have other people think fondly of us. So here's how we do it. Mark, I have the coffee meetings, and I'm going to give you the script to set it up, which I very rarely give on YouTube. The, the thought process is I'm having the coffee meetings not, if I'm a mortgage lender, I'm not having the coffee meeting to get a mortgage. I'm have a, so, so let's just say Mark's going to have a coffee with a financial planner. My goal for that meeting is, in one hour meeting, my goal is to have him talk for 30 to 45 minutes because people love to talk about themselves. And I've met with people and let them talk for 40 minutes. I talk for five and they tell me I'm the best communicator and the best person because mm -hmm. they freaking ran their mouth. They love it. So when you set a coffee and rule number one, by the way, is let them make them talk first. But my goal in listening is the whole time because they're going to talk about personal. I like to hunt. I like to fish. Uh, I used to be a nationally ranked bowler. I like martial arts. I like cars. So you get them to talk about business and personal <clears throat> in the back of my mind. The only reason I'm getting them to talk it is not to make sales. It's who do I know that they'd like to meet? to help them with the problem, to fix a problem, to help them make their life better. I'm listening for complaints and I'm thinking in my mind, who do I know that I can introduce them to? If I meet a financial planner, my mind is gearing toward, hey, Mr. Financial Planner, do you work with business owners, individuals? Individuals, awesome. What's their liquid? Usually they're 50,000, a half a million liquid. Now I'm thinking about bookkeepers and CPAs that work with individuals. Some financial planners know, I like to work with business owners that have, you know, $10 million businesses. And I like to work with people who have 1 million to 5 million liquid. Good. Then I'm thinking about commercial bankers, commercial real estate agents, CPAs who have a higher net worth clientele. I'm trying to match the people I've had the coffee meeting with, with the people I'm having the coffee meeting with now. So I'm going to ask you a question, Mark, would you rather I introduced you to someone who needs a loan as you being a mortgage lender, or would you rather intro me introduce you to um, a, a relocation company where they're helping companies relocate 25 employees a month from New York and North Carolina to California and they need to buy a home when they get here? What would you rather have? If you say the first one, I'm going to close this webinar. <laughs> the relocation. Of <clears throat> so what we're doing here. Is I never think, oh my God, I don't have a I don't have a mortgage I don't have a mortgage client for Mark. Who cares? Mark, I'm gonna try to introduce you to financial planners, good real estate agents, uh, staffing companies. Now I worked for Cisco Systems and another couple startups uh, in, in 99, 2000, 2001 during the dot-com boom and bust. I can't even count how many people I recruited from North Carolina, from Texas, from New York to quit their jobs and move to California. They needed to buy a freaking house. I did not know this stuff 26 years ago. I learned it 20 years ago. The business that I could have given real estate agents and mortgage lenders, I mean, probably 20 or 30 deals in, in three years. What I look at is I don't have any fear at all, Mark, if I don't have a mortgage client for you because I'm going to introduce you to bankers, financial planners, real estate agents, and then I'm going to stand out from all the other people in the world because I'm referring you to referral partners which carry more weight than the, than the client, the once in a while client. The original question you asked is how do I get in with people when all they want to do is do transactions? When I meet a real estate agent, I'm going to meet 50 other mortgage lenders is if you never sent a real estate agent a client, but you introduced them to a good house cleaner, carpet cleaner, handyman, roofer, financial planner, banker, on and car carpet, everything, con and on and on. And you never introduced them a client, but you introduced them to 25 power partners or you facilitated lunches at your office or at a, at a Starbucks and you brought a carpet cleaner, a real estate agent, a, a, your mortgage lender and brought them and you bought them all coffee with the sole intent of introducing them to each other. So over time, maybe they can introduce clients to each other and there's nothing in it for you, Mark. Not, you weren't there going, hey, everybody, rates are 3.2%. What you got? Then you're a freaking clown. And, and when you were saying that it's all fake, Yes, Mark, 99.999% of people have coffee meetings or fake. I'm not fake. I have coffee meetings to provide. And when I say provide value, I am not talking about talking to them about rates. You start talking about your two. If you meet with a CP and you're telling mortgage rates, you, you might as well throw his card in the garbage. 
you better have something more than freaking rates. Now, you do want to talk about how long you've been in business and all that stuff, what you specialize in. I love to work with first-time home buyers, empty nesters, all of that stuff. But don't mention rates because you're going into sales mode. And then say, what types of industries could I introduce you that could help you build your business? And they're going to go, no one's ever asked me that. Because they were expecting you to quote rates and try to sell them a freaking mortgage. And then you go, I know a lot of people. You, you need to meet any. And, and then you start facilitating these. My yeah. favorite thing to do, Mark, is after I have the coffee or after I go to a Chamber of Commerce event or I go to a mixer, I did this. Um, I have a video on it on my YouTube channel. What I would do is I would go home with the cards, but I'd have a, a magnetic. Trust me, there's a magnetic dry erase board right here. And I would take the cards and I would pin them. So I would go to a mixer, right? Everybody goes to mixers or whatever, even, and I'd collect 15 cards. I put them in my pocket. Either that night or, or the next morning, I would take those cards and I'd take a magnet and I'd magnetize them to a dry erase board. And I'd go, here's Mark, Mark the mortgage guy right there. Hey, Mark. Here's Mark the mortgage guy. And then I met a real estate agent. So I would take a dry erase pen and I'd draw a line connecting them. And then I'm in a mortgage, I'm in a, a CPA and I'm at a banker. I'm going to go CPA to banker. And then I made a state farm agent and I met uh, a real estate agent. I might connect it. So I'm just trying to figure out who would be a good referral partner, banker to CPA, state planning attorney to financial planner, financial planner to CPA. And I'm just drawing lines. And sometimes one guy might have six lines. That's fine. Carpet cleaner to a handyman, roofer to a builder, build, whatever. Connect, yeah. draw the lines. And then I would go, okay, cool. So I got, I have, life insurance, and I have a state planning attorney. Cool. I take those two cards out of it, right? Here they are. And I open up an email and I go, hi, John and Jim. And in the body, this is an email that's already in my drafts, Mark. It's already typed. Hi, blank. I met you at blank event. I also met blank at the same event. You do blank. Blank does blank. And I thought after meeting you, I thought you two might want to have coffee. Here's everybody's contact information. Now, without the blanks, hey, John and Jim. Hey, John and Jim. I met you both last night at the Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. John is an estate planning attorney. Jim does life insurance. You both said you like to work with life. And so I, as soon as I got back to my office, oh my God, I don't know. I wonder if these two met. I think you two should probably have coffee, get to know each other better. John, here's Jim's information. Jim, here's John's information. What 90% of that email was already type Mark. So all I do is fill in the blanks. Now, Mark, I did... I averaged three to five a day of those, okay, for about three to five years. Now, what I would do, Mark, is instead of reaching out to you, if I did this to you, I met you last night and today I sent you another guy to meet for coffee. I'd wait a day, I'd have a big dry race board, and I'd just move you to the next column. Well, after I did some intros, Mark, when I take the car to move it to the next column, guess what the next column is? Email Mark the next day and go, hey, Mark, just checking to see if you got the 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 financial planner I sent you. And by the way, I have a big network. I'm always looking for great mortgage lenders to add to my network in case one of my clients needs a mortgage. I am not going to, and by the way, this is all typed into drafts. It's already typed. I'm not going to refer you to one of my clients until we meet for coffee. Would you be interested in meeting me for coffee? And if you, if you do want to meet for coffee, make sure you bring a, a big stack of your business cards. Now, Mark, if you don't respond to that email after the day before I introduced you to a power partner, and on this day, I said, I want to add you to my network, but I need to meet you first. It makes you bring a big stack of cards. If there's any question after what I just told you of how I've had 6,500 one-on-one -on -one coffee meetings, hopefully it's not a surprise anymore. Just to kind of lay it all out. On this side, it's you're going to try to get in by introducing your one or two clients. Now, Mark, with the rates changing, I know for a fact you're not as busy as you've been in the past. It's impossible. So you don't have a crap ton of clients, but there is not one thing, not one thing from stopping you of going on every chamber of commerce and going on Google and type Walnut Creek Financial Planner. And I promise you a hundred will show up. And then you can click on each one and send them an email. I'm a mortgage lender once in a while, one of my clients needs a financial planner before we meet. I'd love to have coffee with you to talk to you about it. Now, Mark, what we just did, and this, I'm not trying to sell you, but I have to put this on my YouTube channel and let you know at onereferralaway.com is an eight hour course that takes this to another level and includes two hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching. So any of you watching this, I gave you the tip of the tip of the iceberg. 
Uh, there's more information at onerefferalaway.com. I'm going to stop there. Very kind of you. No, I really appreciate you spending all this time. I wasn't yep. expecting you to do that, but that was very kind of you to sit uh, sit and talk with me like that. And I really appreciate your help. And no uh, problem. Really, it was very, very nice. So yeah, uh, thank you. Know, you. Appreciate all your time today. Okay. Right. See you soon. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Okay, thank you too. You. Bye-bye. So anyone that was watching, how would they sign up for your course? Or, I mean, is there any like, uh, yeah, course options or something like that? Thank you for asking. So this is onerefferalaway.com. Thank you very much for asking, AJ. If people do want to hire me to coach them, this is how we do it. Got it. So you go to onerefferalaway.com and you see this bouncing here. Mm -hmm. Click on that button. And this explains the course. Got it. This is the curriculum. It's all webinar based. It's a recording of webinars. It's six or seven hours long total. There's my bio and some testimonials. There's my wife and there's all kinds of cool. There's a mortgage lender, financial planner, attorney. I could put 200 of them on here, but there's no need. The, the options to buy this button right here, it's 795 bucks to purchase the course or three payments of 279. And it comes with all of these recorded webinars. And right here, you can see right there, it comes at two hours of one-on-one -on -one with me. Awesome. Now, if somebody needs more than that, we're going to back up and we're going <laughs> to click on this button over here. And then one hour of one-on-one -on -one coaching is 250, two hours, 395. Most people, AJ, do the six hours for 995. Now, with that, I don't like to do longer than an hour straight because it's overwhelming for both of us. I'll do, I mean, six hours, that's 24, 15-minute sessions or 12, 30-minute sessions or six one-hour sessions or a whole crap ton of 10-minute sessions. I'll break it up any way somebody wants. And I'm generally don't uh, stare up my my watch. So that six hours probably turns into seven or eight, honestly, when it's done. Yeah. So that's that's the way. But start here with oneReferralAway.com and you click that button and that's the course and that's how you join.